In this lesson, we're going to look at finding the volume of compound shapes. Compound shapes are shapes that are composed of more than one shape, all put together to make one new shape. So this picture is of a granary. Perfect example because we have multiple shapes that all make up the granary as a whole. If we look at this, I've illustrated the simple shape on the right. Sometimes it helps to um, visualize it as really, really basic shapes instead of in its original format. So a question might read something like this. The granary represented here is 29 meters tall. The main body of the building is 20 meters tall, 10 meters deep, and 10 meters wide. On the main body, there is a slanted roof that leads to a steeple that is 5 meters tall, 3 meters wide, and 10 meters deep. An addition extends off one side that is 10 meters wide, 4 meters deep, 8 meters tall at the outside, and the roof slopes up to join the main wall, 9 meters below the base of the steeple, and 7 meters below the top of the main body. So over here on the side, you can see that I've added all of these dimensions. Now you might want to take some time to just pause it, look through the dimensions, and see how I came up with them all and how the wording matches to the visual diagram. Often students really struggle with turning a word problem into a visual problem. And so this is a good example of how to do that. And it might take a minute or two for you to look through, see the different measurements, because that's important when we start breaking it apart and solving the problem. And of course, what we're looking for is what is the volume of the building? So begin by visualizing the object as multiple parts. Here you can see I've color coded the different shapes. Then we break the object apart. We think of it as totally separate objects, and then we calculate each piece separately. So in this case, this is the main body. And you can see from the diagram on the other screen that it was 10 meters by 10 meters by 20 meters. And this is a basic rectangular prism. So length times width times height gives us our volume. So 10 times 10 times 20 gives us 2000 cubic meters for the main body of the granary. Next, let's look at the section between the main body and the steeple. This is very similar to a standard rectangular prism in that we have length times width times height, except the difference this time is we have two widths. So what we do when we have two widths is we just average them. So in this case, we have width one, the top, plus width two, the bottom, divide by two. That averages the widths. And then we still multiply by length and height, same as before. So that gives us three times, three plus 10, top and bottom, divided by two, averages our widths, times two, which is our height, gives us 130 cubic meters. Next, we have the steeple part. Again, very basic length times width times height, the dimensions we already figured out on the previous screen. So 10 times three times five gives 150 cubic meters. The roof part for that is a triangular prism which is the same as a rectangular prism, length times width times height, except we divide by two. So we just have 10 times three times two, and then again, divided by two, gives us 30 cubic meters. Next, we have this addition part. Again, it's very similar to a rectangular prism, except this time we have two heights. So we do the same thing, and we average our heights. So we have four times 10, then we average our heights of 13 and eight and multiply that to get 420 cubic meters. Now we add all the pieces together and we have a total volume of 2,730 cubic meters. Here's a different example. Each silo in this picture is made up of a semi-spherical top, a cylinder, a partial cone on the bottom, the cylinder has a height of 10 meters and a diameter of 8 meters. The tapered bottom section is 9 meters high and has an opening 2 meters wide at the bottom. What volume can the complete row of silos hold to the nearest cubic meter? So we'll use the same principles. We will visualize the object. So here is a simple visual. We can color code the parts break them apart to visualize the three separate parts that we need to calculate. Let's begin with the top. 
So the formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, or 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, same thing. And we know that the width of the silos is 8 meters, the diameter, so therefore the radius must be 4. So we can just plug that in to get a volume for the sphere of 268.08 cubic meters. But remember, we're only looking at half the sphere in this case. So we just divide by 2 to get 134.04 cubic meters. So for the body, we have a cylinder, or really just a circular prism. That's how we calculate the volume. The cross section, pi r squared, times the height. And we already know our radius, and we know our height. So we plug those into the equation, and we get 502.65 cubic meters. The bottom part is quite a bit trickier. So in this case, we look at the volume for a cone. Volume for a cone is pi r squared h, same as a cylinder, but then we divide by 3. This only works if our cone goes all the way to a point. So there's a couple different ways to do this, and there is a formula that will allow you to calculate this, but I'm going to show you how to solve it if you don't know that equation, because we can just logic this through. The slope on the sides of the cone are going to stay consistent all the way to the point. So we can use basic ratios to find out how tall this cone would be if it actually came to a point. So if you look at this ratio that I did here, 8 minus 2, so that's the difference in the diameter from the largest end to the opening. So it's 8 and then it shrinks to 2. So that difference happens in 9 meters. So to find the whole difference, we need 8 minus 0, because 0 is going to be at the point, equals, and then that's x. That's the distance we want to know. And if we just cross multiply and divide, we find that that total height is equal to 12. So we can plug that into the formula, and we get pi times 4 squared times 12, our total height, divided by 3, gives us 201.06 cubic meters. But now we need to cut off that little bit on the tip. So we know that that is an extra 3 meters, the difference between 9 and 12. We know that we have a radius of 1, because the diameter is 2. And so we just plug that in, and really we just get pi, 3.14 meters cubed. And so 201.06 minus the 3.14, we get 197.92 meters cubed. And we combine the elements, giving us a total volume of 834.61 cubic meters for each silo. We must remember that in this original picture, it said, how much can the complete row of silos hold? And there are seven of them. So we multiply by seven, and it asked us to give the answer to the nearest cubic meter. So we just round to 5,824 cubic meters. So to review, steps for solving compound volume problems. Visualize the object as distinctly separate elements. Calculate the volume for each element, and combine the volumes of the elements now you're ready to practice some on your own.